What's good with y'all, man? You watching AGTV, and on this episode, we'll be reacting to why ultras are so important for football. Now, if y'all happy about this one, y'all excited about this one, y'all have Philip to thank for this. Thank you, Philip. You know what I'm saying? But last time I was reacting to the ultras, they was acting crazy. I was so shocked and surprised and confused. What happened? You know what I'm saying? They were starting fires, creating riots, going against the police. That's, that was a cultural thing I wasn't really ready for. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't know nothing about it. It's one of them things where if you don't know, you don't know. That was me. I was just ignorant to the fact that they had people out there that was like that. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I was in school, when I was younger, they would talk about it sometimes, but I didn't understand the extent of how crazy it actually was. You get what I'm saying? But hey, here we are again with another Ultras video, man. Let's just get into it. We see Ultras all around the world. From the fighting to the incredible. They're clearly the beating heart of many football clubs. But they're also a source of controversy. So we decided to break it down once and for all. What is an ultra? And what do they do? Hey, that, whatever song that is, is lit. Is it for the shot I don't know what he said, but... What is an ultra? And what do they do? We've all grown used to scenes like this out of Italy and Germany. Scenes from this to this in the MLS. The glory of the Balkans. And all too often see them portrayed as criminals for moments like Bro, just look at that shit though, like. Glory of the Balkans. And all too often see them portrayed as Like, bro, this is in the stadium during the game, bro. Criminals. Like, imagine being a player on the field and you look up at the fans and they getting, you know what I'm saying? They getting beat by the police and shit. Like, the SWAT coming down on the fans, though. Like, you know how crazy they got to look as a player looking up? Like, like what's going on, bro? Like, it'll make me want to leave the field. Like, damn, I don't know what happened or who got what, but I need to exit the premises. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Then, not to mention, you don't even know if your family, like, it's one of these players' families could be over there. You know what I'm saying? Like... That's some crazy shit, bro. For moments like this. I doubt they really got the players' families by the crazy fans like that, but I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying. But what are ultras and what do they do? <laughs> Originally used by the Gazzetta dello Sport to describe a group of supporters in the 1960s, ultras or ultras are one of the most broadly defined subcultures in the world. However, the term was only appropriated by an actual fan group in 1969 with Sampdoria's Ultras Tito Cucharoni and Torino's Ultras Granata. Since then, fans have reappropriated the name. Is them all fan ultra fans? Right and there? Torino's Ultras Granata. That look crazy, bro. Really like a whole different world, bro. That's wild, bro. Since then, fans have reappropriated the name. But given the global reach of the game, the term is far from clearly defined. Italians interpreted foreign styles of spectatorship and made their own, something between the South American Barras and Brazilian Torcidas and the British Hooligans. Thus, ultras groups were established, born to represent the distinct cultures and traditions from which they originated, taking inspiration from the time of city-states in which autonomous cities would defend their identity and their interests against others. Ultras value the defense of their territory, which is a feeling that has its roots in the historical age. They are the most fanatic supporters of a team, representing a sort of 12th man. Contributing to what's happening on the field, there's like no feeling like it. An ultra is constantly committed to the club, setting up for match days and social events during the week, attending training sessions and youth games, and showing up hours ahead of match day for any last minute preparations. <laughs> Away matches are especially important. It's where one proves their true commitment. So they come to the stadium early and set up type shit? Is that what he was saying? Games. My brain zoned off for a second. I'm sorry. I wasn't good at school, so sometimes I'll be listening and my brain will just start thinking about something else. And showing up hours ahead of match day for any last minute preparation. Oh, so they just sit there and they prep they shit before the, the players even get on the field. They just making sure they all good and ready to go. They probably got leaders of that shit and everything. Captains like, hey, did you set up the thing for such and such? You feel me? They probably assign people these jobs or some shit. That's crazy. Maybe they don't, though. I'm just talking shit, but maybe they do. Away matches are especially important. It's where one proves their true commitment to the group. We played in Bremen, and uh, there were 20,000 people coming to that game, and 16,000 from, from St. Pauli. And the opportunity to show off your pride in another territory. This comes in the form of choreographies, flags, chants, banners, and fanzines. The strongest expression of these rituals are usually reserved for anniversaries of the clubs 
legendary players, the fan groups themselves, derbies, rivalry games, and finally, big cup matches. Ultras have always been characterized by their rebellious nature. Unlike the British, who support largely rides on reacting to what's happening on the pitch, ultras make their own show beyond the result. Okay, so it's a big organization. They actually got some type of structure to it. So they actually go there and set this shit up. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is how they... So what's like the... Maybe I gotta keep watching. Like, I'm trying to figure out what's the actual... I get that y'all like, like, is it just strictly about the team and where you from or is it about like something political like what is it about or is it a mixture of everything like i'm sure they about to get into it though but and maybe they already did and i ain't hear it right but i'm trying to figure out like what the because if y'all got an organization and leaders and all that it's like maybe y'all just real passionate about the sport though like you know what i'm saying i feel it Drums, flares, megaphones, smoke bombs, the opportunity to freely express a collective idea and a unity of devotion all contribute to this atmosphere. Whenever possible, ultras will march through a city in a corteo, making sure their presence is well known. The group mentality is essential to being an ultra. Rivalry and friendship are the most confusing and turbulent parts of ultras culture. Of course, there are derbies between two teams of the same city or town, but the motivation behind friendships and distances between these relationships can be truly remarkable. Despite being rivals, Genoa and Sam Doria both have a friendship with Boca Juniors for their connection of immigrants and staff. Oh, so this shit deep. Like, they got a whole little... I don't even know, like a whole little wave going on. Like some people cool with other people, and it's like a whole community, not even just in that area. Like everywhere, it's all connected in a way. Like they got people that don't like each other, do like each other, different ultra friends. I ain't see. I ain't even know it was that deep, bro. Establishing the club, as soon as Vesta's Delier, Olympiakos Gate Seven, and Spartak Moscow's Fratria have a connection based on being the dominant team from three Orthodox nations. Just as ultras took inspiration from political protest. The actions of ultra groups have been influenced by political ideologies ranging from avowed nationalists to anti-fascists. For example, Celtic Green Brigade, who forged international links and friendships with other anti-fascist ultra groups across Europe on political grounds, as can be seen with their friendship with German side St. Pauli. While on the contrary, Lazio's Iriducibili consider Livorno and Atalanta among their biggest rivals due to their political stance. Lazio's ultras consider themselves to be far right, while Livorno and Atalanta fans are left wing. In recent decades, the culture has become a focal point for the movement against the commercialization of sports and football in particular. Big TV contracts have left stadiums empty, ticket prices are on the rise, and players seem to live in a different reality. When loyalty is lost and the chance of signing for a higher wage bill wins over the chance of acquiring legendary status amongst a group of fans. Two ultras, football oh, let me, and the Let me watch that for one more time. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me watch that one more time. I gotta. Against the commercialization of sports and football in particular. Big TV contracts have left stadiums empty, ticket prices are on the rise, and players seem to live in a different reality. When loyalty is lost and the chance of signing for a higher wage bill wins over the chance of acquiring legendary status amongst a group of fans. To ultras, football at the highest level often feels like a sanitized product, built more for those in the main stand and commercial suites than for the most devoted fans behind the goal. Simultaneously, authorities continue to innovate new forms of repression against fans. Bro, did he just hug the security lady, bro? Simultaneously, authorities continue to innovate new forms of repression. Oh, she's smiling, though. She was cool. ...against fans. Bans on pyro, megaphones and drums, bans on standing room and away travel have had little to no impact of instances on stadium violence. Today, maneuvering the minefield of stadium laws has become a nightmare. These laws have been introduced under the guise of reducing instances of violence at football, but have largely had the adverse effect of killing the atmosphere at many grounds. The fringe elements of these groups who seek out physical confrontation continue to operate as security forces hopelessly seek to curb it through football-specific legislation. This has left fans feeling criminalized, suspicious just the states and corresponding football federation. Bro, I know even like the SWAT and the police and all that. Well, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's what y'all call it. Like, I don't know. Well, the police, we're going to just say the police. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know, bro, like, when they be seeing the police, bro, like, 
Or no, even with the police, bro, when they be out there, I know they be scared low-key. Because it's like, bro, what is they going to do today? What they going to do today? What's going to happen today? Like, these niggas, these motherfuckers is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't imagine being on duty trying to tame them, them type of fans, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because they really treat it like a religion. Like, based off of this and what I've seen, like, they really go, would die behind that shit. Like, they risking their life every single time they team play. Just to cheer, bro. And the way that they, in the fashion they want to, bro. That's crazy. ...would rather see them banished from the game. Whatever your club or political affiliation, the breadth of Ultra's culture around the world is a testament to this beautiful game. At times, this passion can escalate into violence. But this is not an Ultra's problem, but a societal one. An Ultra's group's existence revolves around intense, coordinated support for their team through vibrant displays during matches, making noise on the terraces, and highlighting, publicizing, and furthering issues affecting their local territory. Okay, so their main mission is to just be, like, lit. They're not trying to, like, insinuate nothing too crazy, but they just be so lit that it kind of just come with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's like going to a lit party, and there's a lot of people in there, and it's real hype. And that one song come on, and people ain't really go there to fight or nothing, but it just end up happening because of how lit it is. You know what I'm saying? That's... That's the vibe I'm starting to get from them now. Like, they go out there and they organize, like, just, like, chants and shit like that and flares and all that just to make it lit for their team. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, it be so lit that shit start popping up. Like, that's how I'm starting to take it, like. Tory, in solidarity with other supported communities. In Egypt, the ultras of al Ahly and Zamalek have largely been credited for their pivotal role in the uprising of the Egyptian revolution. These are just a small number of the incredible initiatives regularly organized by nearly every ultras group in the world. Like all groups, ultras are hard to stereotype and even harder to define. But one thing is for sure, they are not all criminals, and when it comes to football, they remind us of a pure game. One in which you go out and support your team regardless of the names on the back of the shirt, turning friends into family and being proud of where you come from. Yeah, that was hard though. I ain't gonna lie. That's 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 what's up, bro. I ain't know it was that deep. Like I'm happy I watched this because now I understand the archers a little bit more. At first they just seemed like, you know what I'm saying, just crazed out fans just trying to start problems, but now it's more like, okay, I get it. They just be lit and you know what I'm saying, shit be happening, you know what I'm saying? But hey, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want me to react to next.